Hello all, and uh, today I want to demonstrate how to dockerize and test your Flask API application. And uh, in here I want to uh, use this very simple example from uh, Flask. And uh, as you can see, um, this Flask API will ex accept to get uh, nine uh, feature wireless as the input and also it loads uh, some uh, payload from uh, some classifier, it is here and it's using a data model for uh, data validation etc and of course it's loading a machine learning model from uh, here, it's a joblib file um, I think that it is not very important uh, what I need to tell about the main idea. Uh, you can have a very different structure, uh, more complex, it depends on your business. And of course I have some re requirement.txt. Here we have uh, some dependencies that uh, is uh, required for our application to run. Okay, so I think we need to test our application right now and uh, let's write the Python and then app.pi. Okay, um, okay, I see that it's running on um, localhost, it's 0, 0, 0, 0, and then um, 8080 port, it is defined right here, so I can make a copy and paste it uh, to, uh, what is that, I will use a postman, uh, where is my postman, it is right here. So I make a copy and paste and I will use, um, what is that? Uh, and for this I will use a predict endpoint. It is predict endpoint. I'm using a post method for uh, ingest uh, feature wireless as the input. And uh, it is defined in here. And then uh, here's uh, some random wireless that I want to test my classifier. Um, okay, does it matter? I can put some random values in here and I, I need to test it. So I sending my request uh, from uh, Postman. Okay, here's a prediction. I can change uh, something, for example, right here. Just checking, is the same prediction. So, etc. etc. This is how you can check your. Uh, Flask API uh, application locally by using uh, Postman and and this is all for this step so the next step is to is to show uh, how to dockerize your Flask application in uh, just a few uh, lines of codes in the docker file and docker compose um, okay I think I can to stop running my application uh, locally I clear the screen right now and uh, the next step is to uh, dockerize our application and uh, how you can do it. I can do it by creating a docker file, it is nothing special right here, just to be sure that you are in uh, this directory in the uh, application uh, folder uh, of your project. Um, so I need to check again, okay, I am in the correct location and here I can to uh, create my docker file. Okay, as you can see it's being created and uh, so I need to write some instruction uh, how to build a Python machine from zero to make a dockerizing of my application. And uh, the first line is uh, from then Python um, free and what does it means with this line of code I am uh, going to download uh, the Python image that is predefined in uh, in here in Docker Hub and uh, it is a Python official image and that's mean that you are uh, want to get not the Python uh, itself but you uh, need to set up a full Ubuntu machine with operation system with all uh, primary uh, requirements uh, that are necessary to run a Python 3. So it is not only the Python 3, it is uh, 
uh, Python 3 with operation Ubuntu system and all uh, requirements that are necessary to start to run your uh, environment. And uh, another part in here from Python 3, that means it's downloading a, a image is downloading a Docker image. For example, I can press on some random image. And uh, in, in this image, we have a separate Docker file, which uh, also are some instruction how to set up a, a operation system, which are instruction how to uh, set up your machines from scratch. So this is uh, this slide from Python 3 or from something. That means that you are loading a, a Docker image and on the top of that, uh, you are set up your unique machine uh, in the next steps. So um, I think we can move forward uh, with this Docker file. So we uh, loaded a Python 3 image with a uh, running operation system. So in this uh, new machine, we want to create our working directory. It is a uh, work there. Let's say it will be a user and then CRC, it is it's mean a source and then okay, it is application, it's so app. It is like a notation that you can define based based on your business requirement. I'm using the simple one, it's a user um, source and the application. And from this moment I am working in this uh, uh, working directory in this machine. So I hope it's clear so far. And uh, the next line, uh, what I need to do. Um, so let's imagine now I am in this location. The first step what I need to do when I go into this, into this location is to copy uh, requirements.txt. Remember requirements.txt means your uh, dependence is what uh, you need to run your application. So I copy it. Um, to my uh, working directory. So do not forget this dot at the end. That means that you copy uh, requirement.txt from the same directory where is your Docker file and put it in the current directory that dot is meaning into this work directory. Okay, um, okay, it's simple. You need to uh, install all the dependencies for, from requirement.txt. And you can do it very simple, just by run, pip install, and then we no need any caches, uh, so we define it in this uh, notation, no cache directories, okay. And then minus r, it means recursive, and requirements.txt. Uh, so um, this is a line that you uh, usually use in a simple uh, terminal is the same in here. Just remember, uh, now uh, you are working in a new machine in this directory and you do all the steps in the same as in your local computer, but it is on the Ubuntu new machine. Um, okay, so when you got all your dependencies, the next step, what you need to do is to copy everything, um, all these files um, to this directory to the docker image that you have. So copy everything to the current directory, to this location. So copy dot space dot. Okay, that's it. And at the end, what you should do is to run your application and that's it. So CMD, sorry, CMD is means a command and what command I need to run is a um, okay, I, I like to define it in the list. So Python and then app.pi. It is the same as we did in our terminal in the first step. Remember, we wrote Python app.pi, we run our application and we were able to make a prediction by using our API. So we will do the same in the new Docker image defined in the Docker file. So, and uh, that's it for the Docker file. We can save it. And uh, now we are ready to go to the next step. 
So the next step is to make a docker image finally. So we have made, I think, uh, the core of uh, what is the most important to this uh, tutorial. But okay, now we need to uh, make it executable. And uh, so um, the idea is like this. We have uh, our application in this folder and uh, we need to go uh, uh, look, we are in exactly in this uh, uh, location in web app and it is right here. So I need to go one uh, uh, level up. Now I, uh, now I am in this uh, level. I am seeing uh, my web app and uh, all the files what is inside. And in here I need to create another file. It's uh, docker uh, uh, touch and uh, docker compose sorry um, compose and dot yaml um, i make it a little bit bigger okay yaml it is right here okay and uh, i want to highlight one thing uh, with this step so we should write some uh, instruction how to run our image from a uh, web app uh, directory and we need to define it in docker compose and uh, let's begin to do it so first thing is uh, uh, version i'm using a uh, version 3 it is the most popular and uh, nothing special in here just uh, i I suggest you use the same as a uh, version 3 and after we have just defined a version it is a good time to define uh, the services what we will need to run our application okay it is very simple just write a service uh, not in here but it should be right here okay it's very simple and then uh, okay uh, which services we need to run our application and uh, okay as you just imagine we need a web app this is the main service that is uh, necessary to run our application it is app.pi and uh, okay uh, so let's define it and uh, so uh, we define a service uh, this service is a web that means a web app you can uh, name it as you want i name it as web and what i need to do i need to build this web and i need to build this web from a web app location from uh, here you see so how you should read this uh, these lines of code um i want to build a service this service is a web and i need to build this uh, web service from this location from web app this is how you should read this block of uh, lines okay and the next step is is uh, to make a uh, ports um our application let's say you support uh, from the same as it in uh, uh, main script it's from here and uh, let's define it and the ports is uh, 800 800 it's matching to the same like this um, okay, um, what I need to talk uh, uh, on the top of this, so for example, uh, you have the uh, web application, but you can have, uh, let's say, um, some databases, uh, some other services that are required to run your application and how you can to synchronize if let's say your application with a database that is required to to run correctly your application you should orchestrate it and with docker compose file you can to orchestrate it so how we can to do it in the same way as we did for the web uh, service um yeah for example it is a uh, database we need to build this database from uh, um, db okay this is database we need to build this database service from uh, db uh, folder 
and uh, it will be orchestrated together with the web uh, service so when you build a docker image and when you start to run it these two services will going to be run uh, together in one time in the same time and it will be orchestrated that's the idea what i uh, need to highlight in this tutorial so uh, for this moment i remove it and uh, because we don't need it anymore i just want to explain how it's working uh, um, so i'm saving it okay so we have defined a docker file this is instruction for our uh, service web and we have defined a docker compose which is responsible uh, uh, for orchestrating uh, different services and at the moment we have uh, just a single one service that's uh, for the demonstration purpose um, okay and uh, we made a big job right here and uh, okay okay i just save it again this file and now we are ready to make our first docker image and uh, how we need to do it we are see uh, this docker compose yaml file and we can do it very simple just uh, docker com just a moment i will check at the command uh, where is that? Um, yeah, okay. Docker, compose, and build. Okay, just wait a couple of seconds. It's a building the web service. That's looking fine. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, low, it's creating a work directory, it's copying a requirement.txt, it's uh, uh, installing all uh, dependencies from requirement.txt is copying everything it is exporting to the image it's exporting layers and now we are having our um, we're having our image it is right here it's a project web looking nice and uh, now we need to run it how we need to run it okay we had a docker compose build now we can have a docker compose up and that's it so you need to uh, know the differences between docker compose build and docker compose up and as you can see it is uh, running is running on port 8080 and uh, this is the main thing what i wanted to talk in this video and uh, i hope that it was beneficial so don't stop learning, learning every day and see you on the next video. That's it and bye bye.